your, your body has a dietary need. Um, you know, you don't want too much. You don't want not enough. It's kind of like, you know, baby bear's porridge, right? You want everything in balance. You know, being able to go this route and put food directly to the bottom of the root, um, it's to me, it's kind of a cheating, if you will. Um, it's a fun cheating. I uh, won't, won't deny that. Um, but it, it, it just makes it easier to make sure that plant has the balance of, of where it's needing to be at. So, you know, we're able to incorporate the dry obviously through here. And then here's our liquid line. And you can see how it comes down and just feeds right out down the bottom down there between both of them, between the dry and the liquid. So this here is what we call our uh, blowout preventers. So <clears throat> this is kind of a, an older design, if you will. What we have now is we went to what we call mid mount, where these are no longer 18 inch blades. They're now 22 inch uh, sawtooth blades and we bring them forward and we can get by not having to have these on there, a little less weight, a little bit uh, more economical to buy. But I will say one thing, 20 inch row corn and corn on corn in 30s. I love these things. I absolutely love these things because it keeps everything out of there and everything that was in there stays there. Um, and you can just have those corn stalks from the previous crop and it just looks like a snow fence down through there. It looks beautiful. So I'm still a fan of these. Uh, they're just a little bit pricier option. So on your newer then with the 24 inch back here, are they still a dished blade or are they... No, there's, they're going to be more of that blade. Yeah, it looks literally like this, only it's a sawtooth okay. cut into it, and it's just skimming on top of the ground. And fixed. Yeah, and fixed. Yep. We're one of the few uh, uh, that can handle a true 24,000 uh, pound low density mix. Um, I would not advise filling that thing up with just straight potash or uh, straight phosphorus. You're going to be a little overweight on that one, and we'd probably be a little... Uh, a little cautious in, in doing that. But you know, our fill system, the way that we fill, um, we can fill dry and liquid at the same time. So when you have a tender truck here, we have, uh, we redesigned our tender trailers on our semi so they have liquid with them and dry. So when you're filling up with dry uh, with our side augers, you can fill right there. And then also right here is where our liquid fill is. So we're filling dry and liquid at the same time. One of the things about being in commercial uh, strip till or custom strip till, if you will, is anything you can do to knock a couple minutes off, mm -hmm. you know, per fill is a huge gain. So if we can find a way to knock five, six minutes off a of fill and we're filling eight to 10 times a day, I just gained another 30 or 40 acres and we're still doing the same thing and we're not working as hard. So, you know, think 30 acres a day, well, it's not that big of a deal. Well, on 10 days, it's 300 acres. On four bars, that's 1,200 acres. Yeah. Well, so it's a big deal. And now I see you've got the point system mounted here. So whoever is filling yep. knows exactly what's in there. Yep. And then do you put the apps on your phone so that you can pull that up in the cab? Yeah, so what we do is we run the iPads through Bluetooth right into the cab so the guy can see it up there no problem. But uh, our tender truck drivers, they know that once that thing gets to about 23,500, start shutting her down and clear the system out. And it'll wind up around 24.3, 24.2, 24.4, depending um, where it was coming from off the trailer. Um, but I mean, you just stand there and look at it. There's really no way that it just shuts off automatically. Mm -hmm. Um, if you overfill it, guess what? It's coming out the sides and down, <laughs> down the front and you got a mess.